Among the things you need to know in detail in this course are things like how to use McCabe Teal's graphical method for continuous distillation columns and to understand the difference between equilibrium stages and physical trays. Hidden in that last thing is the tray efficiency. A crucial thing in using McCabe Teal's graphical method is to understand what kind of flow units are we actually using. Well, we have said that the evaporation enthalpy must be independent of composition for McCabe Teal's graphical method to work. Otherwise, the, the operating lines, the mass balances, don't become linear lines. They become some kind of curved thing. So what kind of unit can we use? Well, look at these systems here, benzene, toluene and ethanol and water. We'll be doing calculations for both in this course. If we look them up uh, in the table and look at their evaporation enthalpy, if we look at the evaporation enthalpy in kilojoule per kilogram, they're not that similar especially not ethanol water, 840 compared to 2300 almost, that's a huge difference. But if we instead take it in kilojoules per kilomole, they become similar. So thus we need to deal with molar fluxes. Uh, and if you use molar fluxes, you see here that the evaporation enthalpies are not exactly the same, but they are similar at least. So the error we make by assuming that it's constant is not too great, at least. So then we don't need to do energy balances except for at the feed condition. And well, there we have the Q line, which is an energy balance. So if you just know how to use that, you're home safe. Please remember that the number of physical trays always is larger than the number of equilibrium stages. Equilibrium stages are also sometimes called ideal trays. Why is that? Well, that's because you can't reach equilibrium uh, in a real physical tray. You can come close, but not entirely to the equilibrium. And you need to take into account if you have partial condenser or if you have a reboiler uh, and take away those because the tray efficiency is calculated in the column, not outside. And we will assume always that the partial condenser is 100% perfect. So there we have an equilibrium and that the reboiler there we also have perfect conditions. So we have an equilibrium. So those are both equilibrium stages outside of the column. A total condenser is not an equilibrium stage. And that's because we take the entire vapor flux and then turn that into a liquid. And then we turn the liquid into a mixer, oh sorry, uh, a splitter, and then send some of it back to the distillation column and take some out. In this course, we deal with uh, an overall tray efficiency where we count the number of equilibrium stages that we have inside the column. So please take away first uh, partial condenser and reboiler in your McCabe Teeley graphical solution. And then you divide how many equilibrium stages you have in the column with how many actual physical trays there are. And that's uh, the overall tray efficiency. But there is another way, uh, the Murphy efficiency, Murphy tray efficiency. There we do it a bit differently uh, and we won't do it in this course, but it's good to know anyway. So in making one triangle in, in the McCabe telegraphical method, we don't go the entire way from, from the mass balance up to the system curve we go a fraction of that distance. And that fraction is the Murphy tray efficiency. A problem with the Murphy tray efficiency is that you potentially at least can have one tray efficiency for every single tray you have in the column. So how, how get those numbers? 
Okay, but talking about tray efficiency, why do you get uh, different kinds of tray efficiency? Well, one thing is uh, that it depends on the loading. So how much uh, gas flux you have in the system. If you consider this uh, bubble cap tray here, uh, you see different bubble caps here. And A there is when you have backflow through one of the bubble caps. So the gas flux isn't enough to push away the liquid. So the liquid takes the wrong way and is falling down. That's called uh, weeping, like when you weep. And the next one, B, there is simply a non-functioning uh, bubble cap. Nothing is happening. The gas flux is not enough to push away, and the liquid flux, uh, the liquid level is so high that it it doesn't pour in uh, through the bubble cap, but it's still nothing happening. C is one that, where everything is working as it should. There's a good contact between liquid and gas, but in D, you have too much uh, gas flow. So the g gas flow is so large that it just pushes away uh, the liquid from the bubble cap. So some of the gas can pass the bubble cap without ever coming in contact with the liquid. And thus you can't get equilibrium, right? So what is the relation between the gas flux and the tray efficiency? Well, in this book, for example, uh, McCabe, Smith and Harriet, it looks something like this. So F here is the gas flux and it's a velocity times the square root of the density of, of the flow. And you see there is this, somewhere there is a, a maximum tray efficiency. And if you have too small or if you have too large uh, gas flux, then you get a lower tray efficiency, which is consistent with what, with what we said before with the bubble cap trays where if uh, you have too small gas flux, then water takes the wrong way. And if you have too large, then the gas flux pushes the liquid away.